So I'm recording another video from the uh, Lighting Lab at University of Leeds School of Design. And the question today is, how many colours are there in the rainbow? So the first person to write about the rainbow was Aristotle, a student of Plato. Aristotle lived around 350 years before the Common Era, which is how we now refer to, to that period. Well, Aristotle believed that all the colours were created from two, light and dark, or, or white and black. Uh, that's actually another story. Um, and he also wrote that there were only three colours in the rainbow, red, green, and violet. He did see yellow and orange, but he explained these away and said that they were simply the result of a contrast between red and green. So today at school, we're taught that there are seven colours in the rainbow, and that these colours are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. In England, we're taught the mnemonic, Richard of York gave battle in vain, to remember the order. And this mnemonic refers to the Yorkshireman, Richard of York, of course, father to Richard III. And Richard of York was defeated in battle. Um, and at some point, people in Yorkshire wanted to avoid reference to Richard's defeat, so they invented the alternative mnemonic, uh, round trees of York gave best in in value. Round trees used to make chocolate in York. Um, I don't think that they're there anymore. And in the USA, apparently, they remember the order in the rainbow using a person's name, someone called Roy. So they talk about Roy G. Biv, where G is a person's middle initial. This idea that there are seven colours in the rainbow is normally attributed to Isaac Newton around 300 years ago. There's some evidence that Newton was influenced in his thinking that there could be seven colours in the rainbow because at that time, and actually for a long time since, there has been an idea that music and colour are related. And I think the reason that people have often thought this is that music and colour both involved frequencies. Um, but in fact, the frequencies of these two things are, are, are very, very different and not related. I think most people today don't take this idea that music and colour are, are, are related in that way uh, very seriously. But uh, for Newton, um, because there are seven notes in a typical Western musical octave, it made sense to Newton that there should be seven colours in the rainbow if these two things were connected. In fact, um, there is some confusion because some contemporary sources list the seven colours in the rainbow as red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and violet. I prefer personally this order to Newton's order. It seems that when Newton used the word indigo, he was referring to what we would call blue today. And when Newton used the word blue, he was referring to what we today would call cyan. So again, we can see that language matters and that language sometimes changes. So this causes confusion because you'll see both of these two sets of seven colours represented and, and sometimes taught. But it's Newton's seven colours, Roy G. Biv, that people are most familiar with. A more serious point is that today, most scientists would contest that the spectrum only contains seven colours anyway. And there's no doubt that in the right circumstances, it is possible to see many more than seven hues in the spectrum. How many colours we can see depends upon how we generate the spectrum, who is doing the looking and under what 
circumstances, but for sure it's possible to see many more than seven colours in the spectrum. In fact, some people have argued that we can see as many as 100 different hues in the spectrum. However, it seems to me that if you look at a spectrum, you don't actually see a continuous variation in hue. You see these bands of colour. So there is a sort of a red band and an orange band. Now if you look closely, you'll see that within the red band, there are many different reds. So when we talk about there being up to 100 hues, that's what we're talking about. We use colour names to describe colours quite loosely. So the word red refers to lots of colours. In fact, I'm currently trying to publish a paper called How Many Pinks Are There? And based on our so far unpublished data, there are at least 10,000 different colours, that is, distinguishable colours, that people might and do label as being pink. So my explanation of the banding that occurs in the spectrum is that it's a type of uh, categorical vision that occurs because of our use of language and colour naming. And that's a whole more complicated topic for another day, uh, definitely. But for sure, um, <coughs> there are more than seven colours in the rainbow. So sometimes I think it's curious um, and somewhat depressing that the two main things that we start teaching children about colour are not actually true. One, that there are seven colours in the rainbow, that's not true. And two, that the primaries are red, yellow and blue and can be mixed together to make all other colours, and that's not true. Um, and, and, you know, these two um, misconceptions have um, aggravated me for, for a while. Um, uh, however, um, there's another way of looking at it, which is that um, often when we teach things, especially to children, we teach things that are, are simplified. Um, and the example I like to give is that when children are maybe 12 or 13, we teach them that an, an atom consists of a nucleus, like a snooker ball, and then you have the electrons whizzing round. So it's like a model of the solar system. Um, but that's not true. You know, when you go to university and you do chemistry, which is what I did, or maybe even at A-level you might find this out, you, you discover that that model isn't very useful. Rather than thinking of electrons as little planets circulating the nucleus, we think of electrons as being everywhere at once, or rather having a, a probability distribution of, of, of where they are, and things get much more complicated. And, and of course, you can't um, reasonably talk about that sort of thing to children who are 11, 12, 13. So it makes sense that we that we simplify, um, and so you know, th th there is an argument I accept for this sort of simplification at, at maybe ages of three, four, five, six, and I, and I know not everyone um, would agree with it, and I'm I'm not even saying I agree with it myself. I'm just saying there is an argument to say that although you can't make um, all colours by mixing red, yellow and blue and in fact red, yellow and blue are not even the best ones to start with in my opinion. Nevertheless it does introduce children to the to the notion that you can mix um, colours to make new colours and although there, there are more than seven colours in the rainbow um, nevertheless by teaching people about the order red to violet um, you know it's it's not completely unreasonable if you look at a rainbow you have to look really closely and carefully to see the the additional variabilities in in hue and you know maybe that's something which is is best taught when they get a little bit older um, well these issues about 
um, what should and shouldn't be taught um, and um, and which approximations and simplifications are appropriate at, at different levels of um, of of learning for a child, for example, it is very much uh, the topic that um, we regularly regularly speak about in the uh, in the colour literacy project, and um, that's a, a very interesting project that I'll put a link to um, in the in the description. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, are there seven colours in the rainbow? Uh, no, there are not. There are more. Thank you.